Are you looking for a shortcut to fat loss or a way to squeeze every drop of progress out of every detail in your journey to get lean? If you are, you've probably heard the term fasted cardio. Is fasted cardio the secret hack to shed that last bit of stubborn fat? Is it the thing that you're not doing that could help you make more progress with your weight loss? Or is it just another myth that you shouldn't let distract you from the basics of losing fat? Stick around to find out. All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Jonathan, my wife Blakely, and I own Digital Barbell. If this is your first time finding our podcast. Make sure you subscribe before you leave if you like this kind of content. Digital Barbell is an online training and nutrition coaching company dedicated to helping regular people get in great shape. If I had to sum up, our mission is to help people turn the effort they're willing to put in in the gym and into their nutrition into better results that they've ever gotten before and to help them actually look like they work out too. Today we're going to be talking about fasted cardio, so let's dig in. The topics we're going to get into is what cardio is in general, what fasted cardio means, some common assumptions about fasted cardio, the old and new research on fasted cardio, the relationship between fasted cardio and muscle mass, and if you should be doing fasted cardio. Let's start by just talking about what cardio is in general. Cardiovascular exercise, or cardio, is any exercise that elevates your heart rate. It comes in many shapes and sizes, and it can look like a lot of different things. Walking is cardio, jogging is cardio, biking is cardio, and climbing stairs is even cardio. Just like all exercise, there are a host of health benefits to doing cardio, which are not limited to increased blood flow and heart strength, increased bone density, decreased stress, decreased risk of heart disease, improved immune function, and weight loss, of course. In the context of this episode, we're gonna be talking mostly about that last one, weight loss, specifically fat loss. Besides the other benefits that I just mentioned, people trying to lose fat often use cardio to burn calories. So why do we care about burning calories? Because calories really do matter when it comes to fat loss. I mean, they really are the thing that drives your progress or lack thereof. If you're trying to lose fat, you need to be paying pretty close attention to your calories to make sure that you're burning more calories than you're eating or vice versa. Obviously, the eating side of the equation is the most important and, of course, the hardest part too, but you can affect how many calories you burn through exercise also, like cardio. That's one of the reasons, besides the health benefits, why we do it, to burn more calories and to get better fat loss results because of that. So what is fasted cardio? Quite simply put, it's doing cardiovascular exercise when your body is in a fasted state versus a fed state. When we eat food, our pancreas releases insulin. Insulin directs our bodies to either use or store the nutrients and calories that we just ate. When we have insulin present in elevated amounts due to eating food, we're said to be in a fed state. If we do cardio during this time, we're doing fed cardio. On the flip side, if we haven't eaten for a long period of time, like overnight, and it's long enough that our insulin drops down to baseline levels, we're said to be in a fasted state. Reaching a fasted state can take between 8 and 12 hours depending on what and how much you ate. If we do cardio during this time of baseline insulin levels, we're said to be doing fasted cardio. When we're fasted, our bodies rely on stored carbohydrates in the form of liver glycogen as well as fat for our energy demands. So let's get into some common assumptions now. The fact that doing fasted cardio burns stored energy like glycogen and body fat is what leads to some of the reasons that fasted cardio has become really popular as a fat loss hack. Just think about it. If you exercise when your body is in a fasted state and it's oxidizing fat for energy, it would stand to reason that over an extended period of time, you would lose more body fat, right? The other most common assumption is that since insulin levels are low while doing fasted cardio, that the body will be optimally set up for even more fat burning potential since when insulin is elevated, it tells our bodies to burn carbohydrates. Well, as is usually the case, smart people have already wondered these things and they have gotten grants and done research on these things. So now we get to benefit from that research. The research on this whole topic actually goes all the way back into at least the 1970s. A 1976 study had participants doing four hour long cardio sessions. No, thank you. 
They divided the participants up into two groups. One group ate sugar 90 minutes into the four hour session and the other group stayed unfed the entire four hours. After eating sugar, which triggers insulin to be released, that group started burning glucose, otherwise known as carbs, at a much higher rate than the fasted group, which continued burning more fat than glucose for the entire four hours. This is most likely the study that started the engine on the fasted cardio is optimal for fat loss train that still runs strong today. You wanna lose more body fat? Do your cardio fasted. It makes sense based on that study, right? Well, let's back up and look at this a little bit more. It's been 40 years since that study was done and inquiring minds have dug even deeper into the topic since then. As is the case many times with research, subsequent studies will broaden both the scope and duration of the original study. A 2011 study not only looked at the amount of fat that's burned during cardio, but also in the 12 hours after the exercise is over. Their findings did in part support the 1976 study that showed that we do burn more fat during fasted cardio than fed cardio, with the exception of high intensity cardio, which burns mostly stored carbs. However, as is the case with so many processes in our body, we adapt. When the researchers zoomed out and looked at the longer term, they found something really interesting. During the cardio, the fasted group burned more fat than the fed group. However, in the 12 hours after doing cardio, the fasted group burned more carbohydrates and less fat. And in the 12 hours after doing cardio, the fed group burned more fat and less carbohydrates. Remember, our bodies seek homeostasis and balance. We naturally shift our energy source as nutrients are more or less prevalent. The study concluded that there was no advantage in fat loss in doing cardio in a fasted state versus a fed state. Let's keep looking though. A longer term study was done in 2014 that looked at a group of 20 women. They divided the women into two equal groups. Both groups food intake was controlled by the study 100% and both groups were consuming 500 calories less than their estimated daily energy needs. In other words, they were all in a 500 calorie per day deficit. Over the course of four weeks, both groups performed three one-hour cardio sessions per week. One group did their sessions in a fasted state, and the other did theirs in a fed state. At the end of the study, both groups did lose body fat. And since you're a Digital Barbell subscriber, you should not be surprised since you already know that a calorie deficit always causes fat loss. So which group lost more body fat? That was the point of the study. Neither. There was no significant difference in the amount of fat lost between the two groups. Doing cardio in a fasted versus fed state did not produce advantages in fat loss. Are you still not convinced? Possibly the best evidence we have is a 2017 meta-analysis that looked at five different four to six week trials comparing fasted versus fed exercise. Once again, and not surprisingly, there were no meaningful differences in body fat loss in the analysis. They were very sure to note in this study that the number one factor that affected body fat loss in the subjects was being in a calorie deficit. I'm positive that there's still going to be ongoing research on the topic currently, but for now we feel really, really confident saying that doing cardio in a fasted state provides no benefit than doing it in a fed state. Do your cardio whenever you can be the most consistent. So let's talk about fasted cardio and muscle mass. We talked about the two different states that our body can be in at different times, fasted and fed. When we're in a fed state, we're in what's called an anabolic state. That's when we're capable of building muscle. When we're in a fasted state, we're in what's called a catabolic state, where it is possible to break down muscle tissue for energy. A 2003 study showed that muscle breakdown rates are elevated while training in a fasted catabolic state. That means that there can be higher levels of muscle loss from training fasted versus fed. Now we're not here to scare you or hype things up or make you worry, but let's face it, building muscle is hard enough, so why risk it? All right, let's wrap up with a summary and by answering the question you might be thinking, should you do fasted cardio? Again, when we talk about cardio, we're talking about exercise that raises our heart rate. We do cardio for many different health reasons, but also to burn calories so that we can lose body fat. We can choose to do cardio fasted when insulin levels are low or fed when insulin is elevated. When we do cardio fasted, we burn more fat while we're exercising, but our bodies burn less fat throughout the rest of the day to balance out the equation. When we do cardio fed, we're burning less fat while we're exercising, but we burn more fat later in the day to balance out the equation. The newest research still shows that there is no fat loss benefit to doing fasted cardio versus fed cardio. 
By the way, if you want to know how to set your calorie deficit or your calorie surplus for muscle growth, you can check the description below and download our free calculator. Okay, moving on with the summary. Training in a fasted state could open you up for more risk to losing muscle due to the catabolic nature of being fasted. Burning more calories per day to affect your calories outside of the equation through cardio is a tool that you can use. However, at the end of the day, your nutrition, not the amount of cardio that you do, is the number one factor in your fat loss progress. If you ignore it, you'll be frustrated for life. If you're concerned about losing muscle, do your cardio after a meal. If you're not really worried about it, do it fasted. It's not worth losing sleep or arguing with people on the internet over. I hope this episode was helpful. If you want to get the most out of the time you're spending in the gym, check out the notes for this episode to learn how you can work with us. Have a great day.